everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. So this week we are going to make another gunny sacks dress. I am not yet ready to start on the stays that will be required to make the Brunswick that goes with the petticoat that you saw last week. So yeah, the bodice for the gunny sacks, the last gunny sacks dress, kind of turned me off of stay type corset type making right now. So we'll see when that might get made but it is not right now. So instead we are going to make a winter gunny sacks dress, which one of you gave me the suggestion of calling a snow gunny dress, which is so cute, like snow bunny. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to call this, though I'm still going to probably use the hashtag gunny sacks miss because it's a little bit more recognizable. If you do want to watch the rest of the gunny sacks miss videos, including my other two videos, I will leave those links down in the description below. And I'm excited to make this one. I think it's going to be really the same shape as my last one because that pattern was perfection. So for this dress, this white fabric is going to be the sleeves. This is white with little silvery sparkly snowflakes on it and some swirls. And then this fabric is going to be the main body. I really liked this because of just all of the different colors that are kind of in here at the same time. And the snowflakes are actually textured on this. It's like a silver, sort of glittery, but sort of shiny, just sparkle on here. And it's all textured. So I thought that was fun. It gave it like a different heft and everything to this dress. And so I think it's going to feel very different than my other ones. And then I am going to use this star fabric, which actually came from the 4th of July section, but I thought that it worked really well for sort of like a starry snowy night type vibe. This is going to be things like cuffs, band, probably a waistband type situation because I honestly think I'm going to make this so much like my Christmas dress. So uh, there's not going to be new stuff construction wise in here, but I will kind of check in as I go along and if you really want to know construction wise anything there frankly was pretty much the same as my gunny saxoween dress so this is what happens when I make dresses of the same style with like the same patterns you guys keep encouraging me to do like a basic bodice block and in a way I kind of have that here with this princess seam block but you've been encouraging me to do that all year frankly or all 2021 now that it's 2022 when you're watching this for just kind of all of my projects and I haven't done it partially because I have said that well I think the videos might get a little boring if I do that so now you get to tell me are the videos boring if I don't have fit issues please comment below and let me know but all of that said I am going to go dive into my snow gunny dress and work on my winter gunny socks dress so one of the things that I am doing differently here is actually in the sleeves. So this sleeve, because this is a winter dress, I've decided to line it. So it is actually right now pinned, ready for flat lining to some lightweight cotton sateen on the inner. And that will just make this like a little bit warmer than just plain quilting cotton. And then the other thing that's a little different is the cuff. I know this is blending right in, but here's the cuff. Now on my other Gunny Saxmas dress, I just folded the cuff fabric over. So I think I cut it like mm, five inches wide or something like that and folded it over. Well, this one I can't fold over because this silver glitter is actually really scratchy. I don't want that on the inside of my wrist. So instead I've got some Kona cotton here and that is what's going to be the inside. I'm hoping that this will still be stiff enough as a cuff. I was hesitant on the other one about interfacing the full thing and then folding over the interfacing, but I did and it wound up being good. This one I have, oh, I just noticed I got a red thread stuck inside the interfacing. I hate that. Is it obvious? No. Good. It's not obvious. Anyway, this one I am just interfacing the decorative side and then the Kona cotton side I'm not interfacing, but it is a little bit stiffer of a cotton anyway. It's more akin to this quilting cotton as opposed to you know, the sateen, for example, that I've used for the inside of the sleeve. This has more heft. So this is going to get attached to this and there will be a seam right at the edge as opposed to just a fold. So I have cut these wider. These are three inches wide each strip. And that way I have the seam allowance uh, that I can lose from there and still wind up with a two inch cuff on the band. Also, if you're noticing, I have a 
done the cuff in the same fabric as the sleeve, whereas for the other Gunny Saxmas dress, it was contrast fabric. And that's because whenever you see like the white sleeves for the Gunny Sax dresses, which is super, super common, they always have white cuffs as well. So I wanted to keep that similarity going. I may put some trim on it just to give it a little more definition, but I don't have much in the stash that really looks like it's going to work. So that might have to be a later thing. But here's sleeves. I will show you more as I get to it. So as it turns out, there's going to be one other different thing about this sleeve too, which is I wound up having to piece the lining. I didn't have any of the sateen that was wide enough for the second sleeve. The first sleeve was just fine, but the second sleeve wasn't wide enough. So I have pieced another piece in and it will now be wide enough. I now have pretty much all of the pieces cut out and the bodice pieces and the sleeve pieces are flatlined like I was showing you with the sleeves yesterday where they're pinned ready to be flatlined on the serger and I have one other change that I'm having to make and that is because I realized as I started cutting out all of the snowflake pieces that I bought as much of this, I'm pretty sure, as I had the reindeer fabric from the last project. And if you'll remember from the last one, I wound up having to go out and get two more yards of fabric because I didn't have enough for the ruffles. So this time I'm not cutting the sleeves out of this. So I do actually have more fabric, but I don't have quite enough for what I wanted. Last time I made the ruffles, I think eight and three quarters inches wide, I want to say, each ruffle. And this time, unless I want to go buy more fabric, which um, I can't because the roads are closed because there's snow everywhere. And I'm kind of hoping to finish this before the snow goes away so that I can take cute snow pictures in my snow dress. So uh, that means that I have to make do with what I have. So my ruffles are going to be a little bit shorter. I don't know yet if I'm just going to make this dress shorter as a whole or if I'm going to make the band a little bit wider, the contrast band. I have not yet cut that out and that's because I'm second guessing the fabric that I got for it, which was that starry fabric. I'm just, I feel like the stars are reading to stars and that is just with me, of course, holding this up to this and I liked it in the store and now I'm really kind of second guessing it I'm kind of second guessing the fact that it's navy too and so I'm not positive yet if this is what I'm going to do for the band or maybe there's some other fabric in here that would work instead we'll see about that but I'm either might make the band longer wider or I might just have this dress be about one inch shorter because I think that if I was going for 8.75 inches before, these are now 7.75 inches. So yeah, one inch shorter, but I made it work. And now it is time to rip the panels, which I know you enjoy. Is this your favorite ASMR? I've got to say, I like ripping fabric. I mean, it just makes it easy. It makes it so that I can cut 10 strips in, you know, 20 seconds here. It's great. I just finished surging 30 pieces for this project. This, well, okay, there's a bin under there, but this is everything that I just surged and cut out for this project. Oh my gosh, it is so many pieces. And including the flat lining, there's actually 39 pieces that I've already cut out. And that doesn't even include the contrast pieces of which I think there will be another seven, so 46 pieces in this project. And for now, I have to go to bed, but tomorrow I will start putting all of them together and I guess we'll see how far I get. Also, my serger smells a little suspicious now. I oiled it part way through, but I'm worried about a burny-ish smell. I really need to get it looked at. It is now Thursday evening and I have started to work on actually putting everything together. I didn't wind up sewing anything at all yesterday because I edited a video instead. So I pinned together a few pieces and left them to sew today so that I can hopefully just like kind of sew everything because I already have a fair amount pinned. Anyway, so it's the sleeves that I started on first strictly because I already had white thread threaded on the sewing machine. So I figured why not? And they're now done. Unless I decide to add trim, they're complete. So this is what it looks like on the outside. Ta-da. 
nice big poofy sleeve. And then this is what it looks like on the inside, just so you can get an idea uh, what the inside of the cuff looks like since it is that other fabric instead of the snowflake fabric, which again would be a little itchy. So now that the sleeves are done, I am going to sew all of the skirt pieces together. That way, just in case I don't get to the bodice tonight, or I don't get to putting together all of the pieces tonight, the skirt pieces can go ahead and hang, not on that dress form, that needs to get put away. If you haven't seen this antique bodice video, I will link that down below. That came out a couple weeks ago by the time you're seeing this. But yeah, uh, that form is just taking up room in the middle of my sewing room. It's going to hang out on the form behind it. So I'm going to get to it and I will check in with you again when there is something exciting to report. I really don't know how much you actually want to see of this considering I've already made this project. So yeah, but I will see you again soon. It is Thursday night at about midnight and I'm kind of like facing a dilemma. As you can see, the bodice is complete. It has sleeves attached. The skirt, like upper portion, is all sewn together. I am about to go set the skirt to the bodice and possibly do the zipper. Not sure. Or else I will choose to sew the hems on all of the ruffle pieces, which I've already sewn them all together. I just need to, you know, hem them and then ruffle them. But my dilemma is it's lacking something and I still don't know what the contrast should be. I am not loving this star. I really hate it at the waist. I really don't like it. And at first when I held it up at the bottom, I was like, oh, okay. But then I held up the ruffled fabric underneath it. And so it was sandwiched again, kind of like how it would be at the waist. And again, I hated it. It's, I think it's too flat. Like this has a sheen and a sparkle. The sleeves have sparkle. This is flat. It doesn't sparkle. And it's also just a little too busy considering how busy the snowflakes all are on the main part. So I've kind of pulled out like most other blue fabrics. I've got more that are back there in the corner, more that are over here. I've pulled out pretty much all the blue fabrics that I have to try to give it maybe more texture or something. I feel like it needs something with a bit of shine or texture. So, for example, I freaking love this velvet ribbon right here, but the velvet ribbon is A, too narrow, and B, wouldn't work as like a portion down here because that needs to actually be a band that is sewn to the bottom and to the ruffle because otherwise the skirt's gonna be too short because I didn't have enough fabric. So this isn't going to work. I had some other velvets that were back here that I was playing with, but they look great as the belt. Well, the, the blue one does, the navy looked awful, but it doesn't look good down here. And I also don't know about laundering capability. So then I was looking at, like, this is a cotton sateen. It's what I used for my big blue bustle gown last year, but I just feel like it's not the right color. It does actually pick up this sort of blue gray in the swirl in here so i don't hate it but it's still it doesn't feel right hey dora you're being really noisy yeah you're walking on all of my patterns can you please not okay it's bath time now so then i was looking at what about this which is a this is actually a stretch sateen i don't love that it's stretch it might be harder to work with i'm not sure but this is left over from really old project of Snow White and I like the color pop but is it too much and I also haven't really tested it as a strip down there I just feel like it's gonna be too bright so I'm not really sure about that honestly I think my favorite color option is actually this this is a poly taffeta question mark I mean it's got an interesting texture to it but I think it's supposed to be a taffeta and color wise this looks beautiful like it picks up all of the colors of the snowflakes it really looks lovely but I don't know what would happen if I wash this in the washing machine so maybe the question is that I need to do a test of this I also don't know what it will look like as a band down at the bottom since it would be like a plain band with the snowflake on either side so yeah that's a question 
And then there was another question of, is this bodice too plain currently? So like I was playing around with different ribbons, velvet ribbons, textured ribbons, etc. This was the one that I liked best. I don't know if this really shows up, but this is a super, super pale blue, kind of like the bustle gown, actually. Super, super pale blue. And it's got a little sort of a jacquard maybe texture in there. I don't know how well it'll stitch down. But if I did that over the seams, kind of a little bit more like the Gunny Saxoween dress and got those in there, I just don't know, you know, especially once I add a belt, if that's going to be necessary. So I have a lot of questions, a lot of things I need to play with, but I should at least go ahead and attach these first and probably make up the ruffle so that I can play with the ruffle and like even gather it and everything. That's Elsa's hair, by the way. Don't mind Elsa's hair. And then just kind of figure it out from there. So just a little warning if you're contemplating fabric like this, which has that sort of texture. It's not flocking, but it is like a rubbery. Hear that texture on there? It does melt. <laughs> And I didn't really notice how much until I pressed all of the hems on all of this. This is like, I don't know, 12 or plus yards or something like that. And if you look at my iron now, you will see a gross white stripe running down the center. That is the melting plastic from this fabric. So I should be able to clean it off. It shouldn't be a big deal, but just something to be aware of. So this is where I'm ending for the night, <laughs> very late at night or early morning. And the dress is obviously all put together at the waist. I also have the zipper in back here. And I've also gone and run the gathering stitches on this too. I've started to pull some of them up, but I still have to pull more of them up, but that will wait until tomorrow. And then I can figure out what the contrast fabric is going to be and use the contrast for the band at the bottom, which that is a requirement because I need more length. And then I also need to figure out if I'm going to do a belt or bodice trim and then the binding up at the neckline too. But that's all we have left. So the contrasty stuff, uh, evening out the hem before I can put the contrast on and then putting the ruffle on. So hopefully I finish tomorrow because if I can finish it tomorrow or by early Saturday morning, I can maybe take pictures of my snow dress in the snow. I figured it out. This morning I was playing around with things and I have the version I'm going to do. So what I decided on for down here is actually the snowflakes from the sleeves. It is cross grain of what I did on the Gunny Saxmas dress. So this is actually like with the grain, straight of grain this way, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I hope it won't. And I'm going to cut this three and a half inches wide so that it will be two and a half inches showing right here and then attach the ruffle to the bottom of that. And I think that that looks pretty cute. And then up here, I have, I think I showed you yesterday, this light blue ribbon with the little texture, jacquard texture in it. And I tried this and I tried velvet ribbon and I like this. And then I put these buttons that kind of look like snowflakes. I put these in the center. I will put them. They're just, everything is all pinned right now. Um, I will put these down the center. The neckline, I think I'm just going to bind it with single fold as in it will fold in. So, you know, you won't see the surging or anything like that. It'll just fold in like that. And it won't have like a contrast color up here. I think that is going to be best. And then I do still have to check to make sure that this is color fast. I have two different of these velvet ribbons. This one is a higher quality. And then I have one that is like a Christmas ribbon. I think it's the Christmas ribbons that run, but this is a nicer quality velvet ribbon, I feel like. So um, I am going to check that it's color fast before I sew it on and hopefully it won't be an issue laundering it. I would really rather have it sewn on than like tie it as a sash because when you tie it as a sash, you get, you know, the wrinkles underneath. And so, yeah, I'm going to do a wash test on this before I sew it on. And I'm going to do that as soon as I stop filming this. And then I will sew everything on a little bit later today after I do some errands and stuff. I've just finished sewing all of the ribbon trim onto the bodice here. I think that this came out okay. I mean, it's not as clean of a job as like when you sew velvet ribbon on because the stitches really disappear in velvet ribbon and this is not. So you can kind of like see a ripply sort of thing going on, but it's not too bad. And then this is the velvet ribbon and I had just a little bit of that piece of ribbon left. 
So I decided to make a little bow. I know that this is absorbing all of the light, but this is the navy velvet ribbon and I have sewn on, so I did this just like a really easy bow. I took the long strip and sewed it in the middle and then turned it in right side out and then did the same thing with the little strip using very, very little seam allowance because I wanted as big of a bow as possible. And then I sewed right on the edge right here, like all the way through to the dress so that it's all attached at this point. And then over here, I sewed just on the bow and I'm going to put, I think a snap, maybe a hook, but I think a snap on this side, like right here and then down here to the waist so that I can just click snap that right in place and it'll be a cute bow in the center back of the dress that you cannot see on screen I think at all right now. Oh and the other thing that I did is that I did the binding on the neckline so I sewed the right sides together by machine and then I turned it around and stitched it by hand over on this side so that is all done which means that all of like the fiddly smaller bits on the bodice are done and I can start to work on this on the floor which is the giant ruffle so I can pull that up and put the band on. I have cut the band and I've surged it these are all the strips I haven't yet sewn them together so those need to go together and on the dress first and then I can put the ruffle on the bottom and then she'll be done other than a little snap there and a little hook right up at the top of the neck. So I don't even remember if I mentioned this earlier today but it is actually New Year's Eve right now and in fact right now it is about 47 minutes 47 minutes until midnight. So one of the things that I feel like I have been I don't know racing with myself for is like Will this be a 2021 project or will this be a 2022 project? And I probably won't know until it gets to midnight because I am very close. I'm kind of feeling like it's going to be 2022, but I wound up having the evening free because of the ice on the roads. And so I have been racing myself other than a nap earlier. I have been racing myself trying to see if I'm going to finish this. So at this point, I have two of the five sections of ruffle pinned and actually sewn on. I now have to pin on and sew on the other three of the five sections of ruffle and then it needs about seven or eight buttons down the front, the hook at the neck, the snap at the waist, and it is done. So I don't know that I can do all of that in 46 probably at this point minutes because those ruffles take forever to pin on. They're just, there is so much volume on this. That is why I sew it on in chunks because I don't want the pins to like fall out or things to shift as I go around and do the entire thing. I'm not sure exactly how long that first ruffle took, but uh, honestly, it mm, probably was at least about 45 minutes. So keep your fingers crossed. Maybe this will become a 2021 project. I will report back in just a little bit. Well, it is now five minutes to midnight, so I can officially say this is going to be finished in 2022. I have one panel left of the five to attach to the skirt. I've already attached three and four since I last talked to you. And so it's the one panel, the buttons, the pressing of the ruffles down at the bottom as well, and then the hook at the neck and the snap on the bow. And I think that is everything. So, I mean, we're very, very close, but I want to go outside and watch everyone shooting off stupidity or, you know, fireworks. Actually, it's probably not that stupid right now because the ground is covered with snow. So, um, hopefully no one will set any fires. Yeah. Anyway, I am going to go put on some warm clothes because I think it's 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside and go look at some fireworks and then maybe have a snack or something. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and come back and finish this dress tonight slash early hours of the morning anyway. I know that you're watching this a couple weeks from now, but <laughs> happy belated new year. Well, I took about an hour's break after midnight to, you know, celebrate the new year. And it is now a little after two, but it's done. It's got ruffles and everything. So tomorrow there should still be snow on the ground. Yay. And I will put this on, which I'm a little bit nervous about because, you know, if you haven't noticed, I haven't tried this on since uh, I put it together at all. So yeah, I'm going to put this on. Hopefully everything's going to fit right. And I will take pictures in the snow. So I will see you tomorrow.
that was enough finished footage because my camera ran out of power and I have a tiny bit left that I can hopefully get this outro out in. So overall for project wrap up, I am quite pleased with how this came out. However, you may notice there is something slightly different than how it was when you saw it before, which is the velvet ribbon at the waist is no longer on it. And that is because I went to go put it on today and it was very, very small right at the waist. So obviously the bodice itself must have gotten eased in to the velvet ribbon as I was putting it on and I did not notice because oh my gosh it was really tight here like it would have been uncomfortable to wear it for any period of time frankly so I took the velvet ribbon off I seam ripped it all off including the bow and the snaps and everything that I'd put on also it was so tight that the snap kept popping on the bow because there was just like too much there and the bodice without the velvet ribbon on fits great just like the Christmas one. So for right now I have just this navy blue sash that I've tied around it. The only thing is with sashes like this one keeps doing is that it keeps falling down. So I would like to have it actually on. I don't know that I would do it with this because I use this on a lot of other dresses, but frankly, I do think it looks really good. So I might, or I might just tie it on like I'm doing right now because it's easy, even if it does wind up looking droopy in the back sometimes. But other than that, the dress fits great, especially considering I did not try this on at all <laughs> while I was making it, including the fact that I didn't do a mock-up. So uh, yeah, that could have gone wrong really easily. The one other thing that I'm not sure that I like as much about this dress versus like the other ones that I've made is I do kind of feel like having the contrast sleeves, I don't know if they're set maybe a little bit farther out than they should be or what, but I feel like having the contrast sleeves does make me look a lot wider at the shoulder, particularly because they are white contrast as opposed to like a darker color. I do feel like I look very wide across. I don't know if that bothers me yet, We'll see. I'm also not sure if I love the ribbon, or I guess I should say I really like the ribbon. I'm not sure that I love that it stops right here and then doesn't continue up here. And that was because I put it on the inside of the seam as opposed to the outside. So if it was on the outside, I could have continued it up, except that I didn't have enough ribbon. So hopefully that's not something that will bother me. And if it is, I could always add some sort of a trim around the neckline, I guess. But I do really like the little buttons, even though I do think they quite disappear in. I like the color and texture of the ribbon. I think that looks really cute and picks up the blue of the like the blue gray swirls in here. It's pretty much the same color. So I do think that that is cute and I'm really excited to be able to wear this for a long amount of time. It was a little bit cold outside because I just have the lined sleeves. I wasn't wearing like another blouse underneath or anything. Um, but I mean, it's 36 degrees outside right now and it is not normally that cold, nor do I normally go outside without a jacket on. <laughs> so. Overall, I'm super pleased with this project. Whether it is the last project of 2021 or the first project of 2022, I am not sure what to count it as yet since it was, you know, an hour's worth of work in 2022. I think I'm going to call it a 2021 project and I'm very excited to wear this for the whole rest of the winter because I can. It's not holiday specific. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon. Patreon and my Kofi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Julie. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!